I have planned a menu that has cowboy written all over it. Case in point, cheeseburger meatloaf. I cannot imagine how good this is gonna be. It's actually a new spin on my regular meatloaf, and I know those guys are gonna dig right in. I just cut up some Texas toast into small cubes, and I'm gonna pour a half a cup of whole milk over the bread. This is how I start pretty much every meatloaf I make, soaking bread in milk. Okay, I'm gonna let the bread have a chance to absorb all the milk, and I'll whip up the sauce that goes on top of the meatloaf. I don't know how anybody eats meatloaf without ketchup. <laughs> I think it makes for the best meatloaf sauce. And I'm gonna give this ketchup sauce a cheeseburger spin by adding some yellow mustard. You can do Dijon if you wanna elevate it a little bit. I don't like to elevate meatloaf too much. It is what it is. I'm also gonna add a quarter cup of grated onion and salt and pepper and then I'll stir this until it's totally mixed. Now I'll make the meat mixture, and I need a big old bowl for that. I'm using two pounds of ground beef, and then I'll add in all this bread. It pretty much soaked up all that milk in seconds. That was some thirsty bread. Now I'm gonna add two eggs, and that helps bind the meatloaf together. And then more onion. I'm adding red onion this time, diced really fine, and then bacon. You can't have a cheeseburger without bacon. I cooked several pieces and just chopped it up. A little more ketchup, just about a tablespoon, and a little squirt of mustard. <laughs> I love making meatloaf. Salt and pepper, just a little more. Now, I would love to say you can stir this delicately, but there's no other way to mix meatloaf than to go in with your hands. It's just the best way to make sure everything is totally mixed. This is all mixed together. I still see chunks of the Texas toast, which is exactly what I want. Now, here's where the cheese comes in for the cheeseburger meatloaf. I've got some sharp cheddar and I cut it into cubes, about the same size as the bread cubes. When this meatloaf bakes in the oven, these chunks of cheese just soften and kind of start to ooze all over the place. <laughs> Okay, I think this is about as mixed as it's gonna be. So I've got a broiler pan lined in foil so it doesn't make a huge mess. And I'm just gonna drop this whole mixture right on the pan. And I'm gonna form it into a pretty flat rectangle. The more dome your meatloaf has to it, the longer it takes to cook and the harder it is for it to cook evenly. So I like to have it pretty much a uniform thickness but not too thin that you can't slice it and see that beautiful meatloaf inside. Time for the sauce to go on. Well, half the sauce anyway. I'll add the other half after the meatloaf is cooked for a while. This is such a pretty color. The mustard really brightens it up. I'm gonna cover this with foil. Got a big old piece. And I wanna make a little tent. That way it won't stick to the top of the meatloaf. I cook this for the first stage at 350 degrees for an hour. I'll take the foil off. Now I've got the rest of this sauce and I'm gonna put it on. And I'm gonna put this back into the oven for another 40 minutes uncovered. So the final thing to add is grated cheddar back into the oven just long enough for the cheese to melt. 